What the heck is a gravel bike? How do they compare to road and mountain bikes? And why should you consider buying one? Gravel bikes have exploded in popularity in recent years, and it is easy to see why. Offering bucket loads of versatility and the opportunity for riders to get away from bustling car-filled roads, gravel bikes make a lot of sense for the everyday rider. In this video, I'm going to talk you through what goes into making a gravel bike and what you should consider when shopping for one. However, before we get into that, first off, a big thanks to our sponsors, Giant, for supplying us with the bikes we're talking you through today. In fact, the Giant Revolt I'm talking you through today is the very bike that won our coveted 2022 Bike of the Year test. If you want to learn everything you need to know about that bike, check out the link in the video description or in the card above. What is a gravel bike? Simply put, a typical gravel bike is a drop bar bike designed to let you ride over a wide variety of surfaces. You're best to think of it as somewhere vaguely between a road and a mountain bike. Drop handlebar and sporty geometry means you can hold your speed on the road, but with lower gearing and wider tires, you can also head off road confidently. This inbuilt multi-terrain capability means you can link up routes which include trails, single track, forest roads, bridleways, byways, the whole spectrum of off-road adventures. Now, the key thing here is that a gravel bike will allow you to traverse this terrain more efficiently and faster than you would be able to do so on a road or mountain bike. Gravel bikes are also well suited to being loaded up with your camping kit to head away from multi-day bike packing adventures. At this stage, it's worth stressing that gravel riding might mean something very different to you depending on which part of the planet you're on. Here in the UK, what is considered to be gravel riding couldn't be further removed from the endless dusty plains of gravel racing's spiritual home in the Midwest of the USA. In fact, we regularly see comments from our beloved American audience claiming that our heady mix of bridleways, muddy trails and single track isn't even gravel riding at all. This variety of riding is reflected in the broad spectrum of gravel bikes available on the market. Some gravel machines are more pitched towards road speeds and light off-road trails, while others bear more resemblance to your typical mountain bike. As with all decisions in cycling, choosing the right bike for you is totally dependent on the riding you intend to do. Let's take a closer look at the design features that define the typical gravel bike. Most gravel bikes are made from aluminium or carbon, but there are, of course, some manufacturers who produce bikes made from steel and titanium. Aluminium frames are more affordable, durable, and relatively lightweight, making it a good choice for more budget-oriented gravel bikes. A carbon frame is typically lighter than an aluminium frame set. It can also be engineered to fine-tune stiffness and comfort, and offers further opportunities for aerodynamic optimization. Yes, aero, carbon gravel bikes are a thing. Although they may look similar to a conventional road bike, gravel bike geometry is designed to offer more stable handling off-road. Gravel bikes also typically offer a more upright and comfortable riding position, with more stack and a shorter reach, though that is not always the case. The frame's tubes will often be shaped to cushion the ride, particularly at the rear triangle, where curved and flattened sections of the chain and seat stays improve rear-end comfort. All of this adds up to a bike which offers a cosseting ride on long days out, with a geometry which is best suited to tackling off-road obstacles and light, gravelicious descents. A key feature of a gravel bike which differentiates it from a road bike is tire clearance, and lots of it. Gravel bikes can be run with significantly bigger tires than those seen on road bikes. The extra volume of a gravel bike tire lets you run lower pressures, offering more grip and control when riding on rough surfaces. Tire choice will make a big difference to how your gravel bike rides and the terrain it will perform best on. Generally speaking, the bigger your gravel tire, the more comfort and control you will have on rougher surfaces. To give context, this giant revolt offers tire clearance for up to 53mm wide tires on 700c wheels. 
By comparison, a typical road bike will be specced with 28 or 25mm wide tyres, with 32 being the absolute upper limit in most cases. However, most gravel bikes have settled on 40mm wide tyres as a sort of stock de facto standard, and that includes this giant Revolt. Now, the trade-off of increasing tyre volume is increased rolling resistance, slightly increased weight, and ever so slightly vaguer handling on the road. Now, tyre volume is only half of the equation. Gravel tyres come in a wide variety of tread patterns, and while dry conditions like this may require only a light file tread or diamond tread, wet and muddy winter conditions require a more aggressive tyre, with side lugs improving control on slippery, muddy terrain. Most gravel tyres can also be run tubeless, with tubeless setup allowing you to run lower pressures without the risk of pinch flats. The sealant used in tubeless tyres will also often seal up any small punctures, often before you've even noticed. Now, as you might have guessed, choosing the right gravel tyres for you can be a bit of a minefield. Luckily for you, our beloved watchers, we've already done the hard work, and you can head to the link in the video description or click the card above to see a full rundown of the very best gravel tyres we've tested here at Bike Radar. Most gravel bikes are built around 700c wheels, which is the same size as used on the majority of road bikes. However, many gravel bikes are also compatible with 650b wheels. They have a slightly smaller diameter than 700c wheels and can be shod with even wider tyres. Almost all mainstream gravel bikes are equipped with disc brakes, whether that's mechanical or hydraulic. They offer consistent and effective braking, no matter the conditions. And with the calipers mounted low down on the frame and fork, they leave ample space for nice, chunky tyres. Gearing is key when it comes to gravel bike setup. When you're tackling steep off-road climbs, you'll want to have lower gearing, and that's offered by a typical road bike. With grip reduced, it's much harder to stand out of the saddle. So, having a low gear means you can sit, spin away, and climb on steep pitches with ease. The majority of gravel bikes are now built around gravel-specific group sets from either SRAM, Shimano, or Campagnolo. The main buying decision that will be made by most prospective gravel bike buyers is between a 1x or a 2x drivetrain. A 2x drivetrain, as pictured here on the giant Revolt, has two chain rings mounted to the crankset, and that is paired with, generally speaking, a slightly smaller cassette at the rear. On a 1x drivetrain, we have a single chain ring up front and a wider range cassette at the back, which has slightly larger steps between the gears, but overall about the same range. Now, some riders prefer the simpler package and ever so slightly lower weight offered by a 1x setup, whereas other riders prefer a 2x setup for the narrower spacing between gears and, theoretically, slightly larger range. Whether you opt for 1x or 2x, the key thing is that your gearing is going to be wider range than that of a road bike, so again, you can tackle those steep pitches while still having a suitably hard top-end gear for those long road stretches. Another typical feature of gravel bikes is the option to fit oodles of accessories to your bike. To start off, many gravel bikes will feature mounts for panniers and mudguards. This makes them a great choice for cycling to work or as a fat-tired winter road bike. Some gravel bikes also feature mounts on the top tube just behind the steerer for mounting a top tube bag. Many will also feature mounts on the fork legs where you can mount additional cages or even small bike packing bags. Compared to a road bike, a gravel bike will also typically feature more water bottle mounts in the front triangle. There are other features which define the typical gravel bike, and these are primarily designed to improve comfort and control. To start, bars which flare out to the drops are a common feature of gravel bikes. Flared bars give more leverage when riding in the drops, improving comfort and control on off-road descents, which is very important if you're a wild treader like me. Dropper posts also commonly feature on higher-end gravel bikes, though they're more aimed at the gnarlier end of the gravel riding spectrum. 
It's also increasingly common to see suspension features on gravel bikes, whether that's a fully fledged suspension fork or more passive designs which build flex into the frame, fork or the finishing kit. For example, the Revolt here has a D-shaped carbon post and this flexes more when seated compared to a round post, improving rear end comfort. It also features a carbon handlebar, which is designed specifically to soak up vibrations, improving ride quality and comfort. Now, how could we do a video these days without mentioning e-bikes? Many brands now offer electric gravel bikes and the market shows no signs of slowing down. Now, we're not gonna dwell on this for too long, so if you're keen to learn more about electric gravel bikes, head over to our full buyer's guide on bikeradar.com. Again, there's a link in the video description. Now that you know what goes into making a gravel bike, let's look and see how gravel bikes compare to other common types of bicycle. Now we'll kick things off with the most common question. Why would one buy a gravel bike over a typical road bike? Starting things off, for those that aren't interested in all-out performance, the more comfortable ride quality and upright riding position of a gravel bike is attractive. If versatility is important to you, of course gravel bikes offer wider tire clearance, but that wider gear range shouldn't be overlooked, as it does mean you can tackle a broader variety of terrain. For the majority of riders, you'll also find that a gravel bike isn't appreciably slower than a road bike for most conditions especially if you tailor your tire choice towards tarmac. However, if you really do plan on just sticking to the tarmac, the efficiency and speed of a road bike will win out in the long run. Wide tires, big clearance and lower gearing? That all sounds a little bit like a cyclocross bike to me. So just what is the difference between a gravel bike and a cyclocross bike? Well, Whereas a gravel bike is designed for endurance riding, a cyclocross bike is uncompromisingly designed for racing for usually an hour or less. Someone choosing a bike for cyclocross racing will be looking for more aggressive geometry and faster handling. This helps you accelerate fast and navigate tight obstacles on a race course rather than remaining comfortable over a full day or multiple days of riding. Most cyclocross bikes will also only have 33 mm wide tires to comply with the UCI's regulations. Now there's nothing wrong with narrow tires for cyclocross racing where they help cut through the mud and sand, but for gravel riders, most will be better served by a wider tire. You could be forgiven for thinking that a gravel bike sounds an awful lot like an old school mountain bike, and it is true that gravel bikes do borrow heavily from the tech of mountain bikes of old. Features such as suspension, wide tubeless tires and wide range gearing are all features borrowed from mountain bikes. But a gravel bike's drop bars and more aggressive ride position makes it a much more appealing proposition if your riding includes significant portions of time on the road or only light off-road adventures. However, even the most progressive gravel bikes are no match for a proper mountain bike if your intention is shredding the gnar off-road. With wide tires, suspension and dropper posts on pretty much all models, a mountain bike really is the best thing for mountain biking. However, for light off-road riding on fire roads or bridleways, the gravel bike is the clear winner. So that is a primer on everything you need to know about what makes a gravel bike. Once again, thanks to our sponsors Giant for decking us out with these lovely bikes today and making this video happen. If we've left any questions unanswered, leave those in the comments. We do read them, and we'll do our best to get back to you. And of course, don't forget to like, subscribe to the channel and tap that little bell icon so every time we upload a video like this, you will get a notification.